any this standard performer. Game. This was a really this, funny this, game. This is weird. <laughs> this Benfica, right, is so wasteful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> That wasn't a red, that wasn't a yellow. It is the UEFA Champions League second leg week here at the Football Kaki and everywhere around the world. Now, for those of you who are listening, we just want to say thank you. And we just want to give a shout out to everybody else who has been listening and supporting us throughout this episode. Now, today, the three of us, myself and our fellow Kaki bros, Mia and Jordan, are going to be discussing and reviewing, of course, the first leg of each Champions League quarterfinal, the standout players for each match and the not so standout players of each match, plus our score predictions for the second leg and who we think will be advancing into the semi finals. Will there be an upset or will the results be straightforward? We've got a lot to talk about. So, with that, let's get into today's episode of the Football Kaki. Okay, so with that, uh, we will move on to the next portion, which is the Champions League. Uh, quarterfinal sec- uh, first leg review and of course the second leg preview. Uh. So just a disclaimer for everybody, um, by the time this video comes out, which is on Wednesday morning 8am, two of the quarterfinals will have already been played, which is uh, the second leg of Napoli versus AC Milan and of course the Chelsea versus Real Madrid second leg. Uh. So um, as we've been talking about Mr. Erling Brock Haaland, uh, the first game of course is going to be Bayern versus Manchester City. Uh. Um, the first leg, right? Guys, uh... I felt bad for Bayern, yeah. yeah <laughs> like, like, <laughs> locks. Wow. it was it was annihilation, lah. So in, annihilation. So I got a few questions, right? Like, um, standout performance. What do you think? Uh, George, you wanna go first? May standout performance for you. Actually, to me, like, there's nothing to stand out because it's the other way that has gone horribly long wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, that, it's for you, it's uh, the players stand out for the wrong reasons. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For Bayern, is it? Or what? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe you can, yeah, okay. maybe you can say who you thought was like the worst for Bayern. Uh, uh, the I know who I think I know who. Got, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like literally really bulging. Uh, yeah, literally. Yeah, but... Oh, dude, he was horrible. <laughs> horrible, horrible. Yeah. Uh, he had zero tackles won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drop. Yeah, he had an error leading to a goal. Uh. So obviously yeah. he he didn't play a good game. I think um if you talk about Bayern's side, uh if you watch the attack itself, Sani was the only one that I really felt was like really causing a lot yeah. of problems. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? Because uh, he's maybe also playing against his old team, so he have a bit of a um Un- motivation. Understanding. Uh. Yeah, a bit of Yeah. Which is also why I think maybe he was a bit sort of uh, agitated doing the game also. That I felt like that's why it sort of uh, caused him and money to have friction. Mm-hmm. Do you think maybe because he was like in such an amped up state, mental I, state, however? I I don't know. I don't know. But I think um, that maybe because he was trying very hard to impress. Like, because you could see right, like about points when he was trying to get to get the ball right. He's not his user, someone trying to pass. He was trying to shoot. Mm. Yeah, no, he, like every, he took a lot of shots. Like he, he took a lot of yeah. shots. Yeah. Like he was like long distance, really trying to fire, right? Even though I think there were points where probably there were better options on the field. Mm. Um, Josh, what do you think? Oh, uh, I just find the setup is a bit weird though. Like putting so many wingers <laughs> on the front <laughs> tree or something. Yeah. Then mostly Ala, Canabri, all this didn't really click well. Yeah. So it's kind of weird kind, uh, to put Canabri at the as a centre forward, yeah. yeah Could have been, right, yeah. I don't know, s- someone to replace lah. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. surprised that they didn't like, I mean, Musiala's play at front with Fortuna Moting, I don't know what happened, but the lineup, I agree, it was, the lineup was a bit weird lah. Mm. It, was a, it was a bit weird to me. Yeah. But for me, right, one stand-up performer, I think is uh, Jan Summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He, played, yeah. he played amazing lah. Yeah, honest, I, yeah, I I really feel that if let's say it was if it wasn't for him, I, the go the scoreline would have been more than three. Uh. Mm, it yeah. probably would have been four, four or five. Uh. There were some amazing saves he made. Uh. Then plus, uh, the apartment corner didn't help him. Uh. The back pass, then the then Harlem press. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was true. That was a, like messy, uh, messy situation that put him that, into. That, that was bad, uh, but the Rodri goal, though. Mm. Whew. Whew. What a goal. What a goal. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, I gotta say, yeah. yeah, sorry. yeah, sorry. yeah just, uh, I was thinking that uh, now with Man City they like to play three at the back they always convert playing three at the back right it's very hard mm, yeah. for uh, clubs to play 4-3-3 three, three nowadays yes correct I, I, yeah. I was going to say also they sort of play like this hybrid formation with Stones because Stones mm. is like sometimes he'll he'll move into 
center back. Then after, mm, but most of the time mm, he's mm, in midfield mm. now, pairing with uh, Rodri. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so yeah. Guardiola just like small little adjustments that he's made. Uh, it's been outstanding also lah. Uh, I think for this game, yeah, especially for it, the matchup. Yeah, yeah, but it's always it's always been the case because like how there are certain formations that match up against four three three well. Like let's say for example, like four three three will always play better than four four two. Yeah, but then yeah, it's true. But then when you then when you play four two three or four three three, it's like kind of the same. But then when you play like those are three at the back or five at the back uh, versus with a two holding midfield, like four three three, you're gonna get a number because your passing triangles right there is always two person that's gonna counter that's gonna mm-hmm. fight against you. Uh. Um, bef- before we get into the previews or anything, uh, I just want to ask right under predictions. I mean, uh, can the three goal deficit be overcome, or do you find it very hard? <laughs> If if you were to ask me just based on um like a single game thing, yeah. do I think that Bayern can score three? I don't think so. Honestly, because I foresee that they'll have a lot of issues getting the ball back yeah. from Man City. Because this new sort of like three at the back formation, as I, I watched it firsthand against Liverpool, right? They just really, it just gives them a lot of flexibility to control mm. the game. Because yeah. Uh, yeah, they they very cleverly can maneuver around like the three back to a four. The midfield can adjust from like wide back to like narrow. And then mm. also at the time they beat us without Haaland. Yeah. So that's the, the, the scary thing also. So for me, I don't think it's possible. And also uh, looking at it, I think Tuchel, he needs time to sort of implement what he wants yep. in Bayern. To yep. sort of like ask him like right now, can you go and like overcome a three new deficit? It's quite difficult. Especially mm. if you consider the fact that there's this locker room issue with Sane and Mane lah. <laughs> so, yeah, if you ask me, I don't think that they'll be able to overcome a 3 0 deficit. Even though it's at home, right? It's Bayern home. Bayern's home, Bayern's home. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know about you guys. Do you, if you all have more confidence in the team or me, like what can they adjust or whatever? Josh, what do you think? Hmm, I'm thinking, like, if they don't have striker, why don't they just play with two, two forwards? Mm. Yeah, so then, and then the rest is more midfield player, then they just yeah. switch play around. Yeah. I. I, I think that's a good idea, but the thing is that Bayern's never really been conventional to play two strikers in front or so. They, they play like, they, they will play Muller with Laundarski last time. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, Muller is a, he's not really a out and out nine and he's, he's not a really camp, a camp. Right? So it's like, uh, he's just he's like a, a free hybrid, room. Huh? Yeah, he's a hybrid yeah. player. So, yeah. But if you were to ask me, I, I thought they should have played Mani as striker because, uh, how do I say? Like before he left Liverpool, that was his position, ma, as a yeah. nine. Mm. So if you're gonna have like a false nine, I thought he would have been a good fit as compared to yeah. Gnabry. But I don't watch Bayern in in and out weekly, so I don't know like how it's still yeah. Work. yeah lor. So that's why. Yeah. yeah, I think I think my opinion is that more towards like it's tricky for Tuchel because he's only had this Bayern squad for a short period of time. Yeah, very short. It's very short. So, yeah. so to overcome a three goal def- deficit while you're trying to implement your tactics and your Im- implement your your um your style of play right into the into the team and gaining them, it's gonna also gonna be tricky. Mm. La. So I, I do think that it's more or less Man City is gonna go through. La. So with that, uh voice predictions. Media, what's your prediction? I think the score will be I think Bayern will score. Yep. Uh maybe like two two, something like that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, two two. Mm. So in, essentially, it's City five two on aggregate, la. Yeah, I think five two aggregate. Okay, okay, Jordan. Mm, I think it will be a two one Man City winning mm. the game. Two one yeah. Man City winning the game. So it will be five one on aggregate. Yeah. What about you, Al? Uh, City two nil Uh, by one score. So it's five zero on aggregate. No, <laughs> 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 like, like, like to be really frank, ah. Uh, City don't even have to turn it up to, to like to ten. Uh. They can just do like six. They can yeah, just yeah. keep the ball. Like like just keep the ball. Maybe get one or one when the opportunity to comes to score, just score one goal. Right then after just close out close out the leg. Uh. They are. Actually, I think to me they're as good as true. Actually, right? City can afford to put Haaland in the sub. <laughs> they no, cannot. Uh, they can afford lah. They can lah. <laughs> but uh, actually, it may not be a bad idea because he is kind of injury prone. Mm. Yeah. Alvarez has also been. Alvarez has been good also. So it's yeah. not like they. Yeah, it's not like they yeah. don't have any options also. We shall, we shall see. see. Let's just yeah. let's just see. Yeah. All right. So the next game, the one that I think all of us kind of know is just one sided uh, Chelsea versus Real Madrid. Uh, first leg score was two <laughs> 0 Um, Chelsea have got Chilwell suspended uh, which yeah. I don't think was actually gonna do much. Uh. So, uh, impressions on the game? Any stand up performance or not so stand up performance? 
Sterling could be more clinical. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Missing a lot Story of, of his life. Answers, eh? <laughs> hey. Yeah. But that's the, like, the issue with Sterling throughout his career. He's not a clinical, clinical finisher. He yeah. benefit a lot in Man City because they sort of like cut through the byline then mm. like, cross low crossover. Mm. He's, al- he's, al- he's always, he, when he scores most of his goals, he's always in the box. Yeah, I was like, in, like, like tap cross the ball in and he tap mm. in or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a good yeah. player, but you know. Yeah, then, uh, so no stand-up performance. Uh, stand-up. <laughs> oh. Uh, I watched the highlights though. Uh, I think this Vinicius, Vinicius uh, played yeah. a yeah. really good game. Yeah, yeah. I can say also Vinicius. Yeah. Vinicius is good. Yeah, yeah. Vinicius good. 12 mm-hmm. successful dribbles in the game. Vinicius. Yeah. Which is like an insane number. La. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I, I was going to say Vinicius also. Uh, he's the one that set up both goals. So, yeah. uh, Benzema and Asensio. Yeah. Uh, Real Madrid, they had 2.3 XG, which is like uh, expected. So, they, they scored around the expected goals range, yeah. which is two. Uh, Chelsea have a 0.66 XG. So, <laughs> to get zero, <laughs> I mean, like zero to one um, mm-hmm. for them, maybe, maybe not. But uh, I... I gotta say, like, I sort of agree with George, like George said in the previous episodes, like, he doesn't understand why Lampard's the manager. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really understand Look also the why Lampard's the manager. Uh, Five defensive honestly, players. <laughs> yeah, bro, honestly, bro. right, all of us do not understand. <laughs> Even I also don't understand. Yeah. Like, yeah, bro. It, I'm very confused also. Why he came back? Lampard do not have a knowledge about playing five players at the back. He plays 5 3 2. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what kind of family? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Plus the, plus, the, plus the funny thing is, right, with Chelsea is like the, the whole team is fit. <laughs> yeah. There's no like... <laughs> no excuse. There's no sort of... Yeah, there's no like uh, one person injured. Ever. They just can't find a good mesh of like yeah. players to go and play. Uh. Yeah, so I, I, I don't really understand also like what they're trying to do or like what their game plan is or whatever. I, I'm also very confused because like they have this very bad problem where they just cannot score. Yeah, they struggle a lot. Like they struggle a lot though. Like... Like, mm. like the other day, I saw this statistic. Uh, like we know Mikalo Muji, right? He came in in January only, right? Yeah, he is the highest number of assists in the EPL for Chelsea. Eh? You know, <laughs> you know what's the number or not? Can I guess like three or something? No, like? two, two, <laughs> you, two assists in the highest assist numbers in Chelsea. Eh? So it means that everybody else uh, has either had one or one assist only. Eh? Yeah. So mm. it's like if you have one assist and your January player comes in and has two assists, uh, it's like it's not something you should be proud of, like It's just they just cannot score. So, yeah. I, I I don't really know lah. But on the Chelsea side, right? Uh, Chilwell is suspended mm-hmm. for the for the second leg, uh, and I think ah, uh, well, Kepa was bad. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think he was okay. Yeah, I I think in dealing with both goals ah. Uh, no, but I think goals, Fofana played badly uh. Like if all your defensive in play badly, you are sure consequences no matter. How yeah, no matter what, yeah, no yeah. matter like who starts in goal, or whatever, yeah, you know. But would you, if you, if you were Lampard, would you have played four at the back? I, I, I think that Lampard, for if you're a new manager and you're coming to a new situation, right? For someone that is not known for being like some tactical wizard, <laughs> yeah, he should be, he should be playing sort of a formation that is the easiest to implement in the shortest amount of time. Now, yeah, yeah, it's like halfway through the season because he's the caretaker manager. Yeah, but from what I understand, also maybe he's like looking at it from a perspective like Graham Potter. He played sort of this like weird three at the back, five at the back thing, lah. So it's like maybe the whole season Graham Potter drew into them like, oh, we're gonna play like five at the back. So he doesn't want to adjust too much. But but at but the same time, I feel that he should be playing what he knows. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. That's what I think. But the thing is, your track record of him playing three at the back, five at the back didn't do any didn't do any good whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, it was just a it was a mood. <laughs> so so it's like it's like basically like knocking against the wall over for the same thing over yeah. and over and over again. Uh. So I don't really know how much of a, a benefit is that. Uh. Um, I, I think as for Real Madrid side, right, it was just another like, oh, it's just another game day for them. Yeah. They yeah. didn't really have to do a lot. Uh. Yeah. Lo. They, uh, Chelsea has scored one goal in five games. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Chelsea, yeah. So for Real Madrid, they don't need to do much, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look, um, score predictions. Is, uh, I'm, not even, I'm not even going to ask whether this 2 0 deficit can be overcome because I just don't yeah, think it's. It, it is at Stanford Bridge. So that's the only like sort of thing going for them. Uh, maybe I will give it uh, Madrid 1 0, I think. Yeah. No, then 3 0 three aggregate. La. Yeah. Uh, Jordan? Um, from Madrid to. I do concede 
sometimes easily like the game against Liverpool like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially away. I would probably 2-2. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. okay, fair enough. Huh? But then again, it is Real Madrid. So if, if, they, yeah. concede, if they concede first, they're probably going to come back. Yeah. High chance. <laughs> yeah. Yourself? So, uh, I think probably maybe like same scoreline, 2-0. Uh, mm. Okay. 2-0. Because yeah. I, I really don't think that Real Madrid, they just need to tidy it. Uh, keep the game tidy, not get anybody in trouble, no over suspension. Cucurella will be playing costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cucurella will be playing, man. <laughs> that should be fun. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did, okay, so... Know, um, before before we transit, do you know I did not know, because I wasn't like following Chelsea very close, that Kante is not injured anymore. <laughs> yeah, he just came back. He came back, he came back already. He, yeah, he played his first game. Right? I was like, yeah, I was like, eh, Kante. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's no, but it's weird though. Like, I saw the I saw the formation, right? You know, he's not the central. He's not the center holding. No, yeah, 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 they, they, play, they play Enzo. Enzo. They play Enzo. Enzo as center holding, which I'm a bit like, huh? I, I think yeah. he's trying to uh, play Kante as an eight. No, dude, mm-hmm. he's a six. Huh? Uh, he's a CDM. Uh. I think his his best formation is like in a two CDM. But he yeah. can bring yeah, the ball forward. Like, he got pace, right? No, but yeah. he, but the thing is that Kante is to be known to to be like the sweeper and the cleaner mm. in front of the defense, ma. So it's like it's like it's what he's bought to do, lah. It's what he's tasked to do. So I think that's that's where he is, like He's not. I wouldn't put him as my predominant playmaker or like the box to box. I rather he just be a CDM. Yeah, but he's not. He's not. How to say? You can tell he's not like hundred percent. Yeah, because he only had one interception the whole game, which is like not normal for. Can't correct, ever, correct. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he should correct. be getting more. So yeah, yeah. I, I I would think that Enzo's more of an eight rather than Kante. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. yeah th- th- that's what I think. Uh. Okay. So with that, any more comments before I move on to the next game? No. Good. That's a, All right. Yeah, good okay, so the next game uh, is Inter Milan versus Benfica. Uh the final score was uh Benfica near Inter two. Um any this stand-up performer. Game. This was a really funny this, game. This was weird. <laughs> this Benfica, right, is so wasteful. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, if you watch the game, right, I, I just kept thinking, like, they could have easily, like, scored, like, no, three, yeah, two or three they, goals, yeah. They just couldn't get the shot on target. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see there was, this, there was this chance in the 55th minute, right? It just reminds me so much of, like, if I play FIFA, then the internet is slow. Oh, I know which one. <laughs> you know the, what I mean? It's the, like the four, the four defender, the four, the four inter defender all blocking the shot from from Mbika. Right? Yeah, then you you keep spamming the shoot button, but like all the the AI just keep blocking the ball. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, I know what I mean. <laughs> then it's like miss kick the ball, the ball fly here, ball fly there. Ah, uh, <laughs> Mbika. Yeah la. Actually, actually, they had a chance. Like I really do think that just that if they weren't so wasteful, like, because. Rafa Silva did well. Grimaldo also. Played Grimaldo played well. well. Yeah, Grimaldo, Grimaldo played well. well. Grimaldo yeah. played well. Then they were they were quite good. But it's just that it's those type of situations where the first goal are like. Josh, you remember? Do you see the first goal? The Bastoni cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Ooh, what a cross! Oh. What a cross! Uh. So, like, I think Josh, what's, what's your thoughts on this game? Uh I think yeah. I mean, Benfica is like really wasteful. Uh. I I, <laughs> yeah, I supported them for. <laughs> I I I predict that tend to win, win home right ah, yeah basket yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, the thing is that your scoreline actually could have come through one yeah. really can one they, yeah, they weren't so wasteful la. they were just like uh, ah yeah. yeah they were really very wasteful yeah plus uh but if you ask me stand out performance I think Bastoni was really very good like yes. uh Bastoni and Barella the mm. two of them for Italian like Italian players at their like sort of uh. To go and be able to play that well at this stage, I think they, they did very well. Bastoni, I think he okay, he had four clearances, five recoveries, five one ground assist. duels. Yeah, one assist. So mm. he had a great performance. Barella also scored the first goal. Yep. So yeah. Two of them are outstanding for me. Yeah, it was the the cross was very good. Lah. But uh, controversial call, uh Michael Oliver, the referee <laughs> that the referee that we were that we were mentioning <laughs> earlier, right? Uh John Mario got a handball in the eighty first minute. That where the ball deflected off his head off his arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. Mm. Head off his arm. Then it was a VA call, right? Then I was like wondering, like, when I was watching this, uh, I was like wondering, wow, possible, right? Then I see who's the referee. I was like, wow, confirm give penalty. Yeah. Is the is the VAR calling the same in Champions League versus in Premier League? Do you know? Oh, what do you mean? Like, uh, is it? Do, 
how do I explain this? <laughs> like when the referee <laughs> calls, they, then they will check yeah, the VAR to confirm. Yeah, are the regulations the same or is it like different from... I, I think they call, they call the referee to the VAR screen and right? then the referee can make the decision. Oh, okay. Because mm. I saw Michael Oliver do this. Now, did oh, okay. Michael yeah. Oliver go to the screen? He went to the screen. Oh, okay. I mean, at he, least he went to the I screen. saw him, he, I saw the thing that he walked off the field after he came back onto the pitch. Mm, onto the yeah. pitch. Uh, but it's just, it's like, John Murray, actually, that one very unlucky one. Eh? Like, off your head, onto your hand. Like, yeah, um, but you know, technically, it's still a, it's still a handball. Uh. Yeah, it's just uh, how lenient or, or un, unfair. <laughs> you may look at it based on what team you support. Uh. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. La. yeah. So, so it's just like, like on my notes, I just say Benfica, Benfica unlucky. The class, previ- the class of Inter prevailed like, because that Bastoni cross to Barilla was like it's pinpoint perfect. Like. Yeah, and, like it had to be perfect for him to get the ball into that crowd for Barilla to hit the ball. And Barilla, Barilla is small; he's not the biggest. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and plus uh, Lukaku just like the slider in for penalty. Yeah. yeah. So mm. so so um, uh, score predictions for the second leg for this one. <laughs> Uh, can overturn or not this one no because it's at Inter home that's the that's the main reason why I don't think that it's going to be possible for Benfica mm. yeah. so uh, if you if you are, if you were to ask me I think the score will be 1 2 2 1 because I think Benfica will still score but because it's at Inter home <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah they, so Inter, have, Inter go through la. yeah 4-1 four, four aggregate la. yeah okay Jordan 1-1 mm, one, one. Mm. One one. So three one three one aggregate three one aggregate in Tala. Mm. Yeah. Okay, mine is uh I think draw one one also. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think that if they if Benfica takes maybe one one of the chances, right? I think maybe they will just probably get just one goal, but I don't think Inter will Inter will lose will lose. Mm. They yeah. will not they will not get everything. Inter defensively they are sound, so they, they just they won't get into any trouble, I feel. Yeah. So Inter goes through. Yes. Now, the last one. Um, it is a clash for the Serie A, but in the Champions League form. Mm-hmm. It is Napoli versus AC Milan. Now, uh, um, before I get into that, uh, uh, Anguissa got suspended. Uh, yes. Uh, which I think will be, uh, <laughs> will, be, be quite, will be quite important, right? But I'm not sure whether there's a rumor, right? Osiman might be back, right? Osiman is, uh, he's fit. Mm. So yeah, he'll, he'll definitely be playing. He'll, he'll be definitely playing. Oh, is that injury? I do not uh, know. But no, I, they said that it's, um, it's some sort of muscle tear. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. So he's, he was out for, I think, about three weeks already. Mm. Yeah, but he's, 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 he's back. Yeah. So he'll, he'll still, he'll definitely play. And they need him mm. to play. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all I got to say. Like, yellow. Yeah, but I think the, okay, stand up performance for both of you this game. Do you think this game was, and also like, just think, uh, this game actually quite even one. Mm. Yes. I was going to say it's very even. But yeah, George, you can go ahead first. Yeah. I'll give it to Sandro Tonali. La. He played well. Like he, he, he played really well at this kind of age. He really stands out with what? Uh, uh, two interceptions, six recoveries, and all this. Yeah. 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 He's, a, he's really good. La. He's good. Yeah. La. He's good. He's good. I think he's. He'll be in demand in the future, lah. Yeah. So if he if he ever decides to leave, to leave, Man United, like, whichever. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Tonali, he's always been in demand for like years already. Yeah. Then, for very long. Yeah. Years. What a bit. Yeah, because you know he's still so young. <laughs> yeah. But he's still so like uh freaking talented, lah. Twenty-two year old. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, Minet, what's your thoughts? Let's see. Uh, I think two standouts. One for um. Napoli is I I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> is the Kavash Kavash Yeah, Yeah, I, I think it's correct. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the uh, who's that guy on the ESPN? And they always cannot pronounce people's name. The Liverpool legend, you, you know, right? <laughs> oh, uh, Steve Nicol. Yeah, Steve Nicol. Yeah, the, the left back. Yeah, he always cannot pronounce all of the people's names. <laughs> but I uh, he's really he reminds me a lot of Mitoma. In the yeah. way that they dribble, you know, mm. like the very clever sort of like wiggly, not say extremely fast, but very, very like, wiggly. Yeah. he's from mm. Georgia, right? Mm. Yeah. So that's why yeah, he's Georgia. like so under the radar. Yeah, yeah, Georgia. Yeah. So he had six successful dribbles. And I think for them, uh, they played well. The But I would say that the standout for Milan was the Mike Nan because he was outstanding. Lah, to yeah. <laughs> mm. So... 
I think moving forward, right, he has to be like France's number one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it cannot be... It cannot like, be Loris anymore. Yeah, yeah. this error-prone Loris because he's really very good and he's at a good age, 28 years old. Yeah. Mike Nan, yeah. So, for me, he was outstanding. He had three saves in the box, two diving saves. Uh, he had one crazy save. But yeah. I also think... Uh, I don't know, maybe y'all can ask about this. Do you know, like, sometimes you know, there's a very famous thing in the NBA, right? Where it's like, styles make matchups. Yep. Mm. So it's like, for instance, a certain team, they are the best team, but they just can't beat a specific team. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder, is it like because of the way that AC Milan set up or what? They just can't handle like Liao or they can't figure out a way to hold off Giroud. Do you, do you know I, mean? really, I, I don't know how to explain. Yeah. It's, it's really, it might be just be the timing because uh, we, we talked about this in the last episode, right? Like when Napoli played Milan earlier in the season, right? Napoli won 2 1. Yeah, yeah, correct. So, so they they want to one right, but when this game was coming coming, up, uh, literally they only played each other like a week before, and Milan won four 0 Yeah, yeah, correct, correct, mm. correct. So, so it could have been a situation where psychologically they are going in right, knowing that okay, I just can I hammer for zero. Yeah. By by this Milan team, right? There might be psychological like thinking where it's they might be a bit more on the apprehensive side on the negative side where they try to overcompensate lah mm. instead of playing the tactical game. But I don't think that was the case for this game because I do think that Napoli actually for majority of the game right they had better chances. Yeah, I think they played well. It's just yeah. That, uh, I I also do see that this Anguissa not being there is a problem because they yes. he's really like their workhorse in the midfield. Him and Correct. the robot car. And they have to play and Dom Ballet now. Yeah. <laughs> Whose skill set is very different. He's like more yeah. of a like dribbler, this type of yeah. thing. But yeah. to ask him to like be able to go and like compete against uh Benesse, Tonali or this, I think it's gonna be interesting, no? You've got to go and see like how well he does. La. <laughs> I think I think it's interesting because also like if you really looked at it, uh, the goal was just a counter attack. Yeah. Like mm. it was it was just I think it was just one attack, right? Then suddenly swiftly Tonali dribbled past. Was it Tonali? It's very yeah, I think so. yeah. easy Milan or the Italy way of playing. Uh, yeah. It was, it, it was, I think it was one, they won the ball, they won the ball back at uh, the Milan midfield. I think it was Tonali. I can't mm. remember who, but he driven past one. Then it was, he had a lot of open space. Then he pushed it right. Then the pass back to Banasa wasn't a good one. Mm. I think the, I think it was Brahim that brought the, no, yeah, Brahim, Brahim, Brahim. Mm. Brahim, Brahim uh, Brahim Diaz was the one that brought the, brought the ball forward. Uh. Then I think it's Ra, Ra, Ramani was the one that go and tried to clear with the wrong foot. Then mm. the ball rolled to Benasa. Benasa just shot the ball and then go. Uh. Mm. So it was just one mistake that caused the, essentially made them lose the game. Uh. But overall, you think this can be overturned? You think Napoli still got a chance? Yes. Yeah. This is the only game that I, mm. yeah, I, I feel that they have a chance. Because first of all, it's at Napoli home. Yeah. And uh, Osiman is back. So yes. that's a huge difference maker for them because they were playing Elmas at striker. Yeah. I think, I mean, not like Elmas, he, yeah. 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 He's he's okay, but he's not Osiman. Like Osiman, he's, he's like market range now is like 100 million at our valuation mm. yeah. for a reason. Yeah. So yeah. He, yeah, he brings that sort of power that they need. So I, I he's like that missing link that they need to go and force feed the ball. So it's like their sort of version of Haaland. Yeah. Yeah. Way. So yeah. I think that they can overcome it, but I don't know, man. <laughs> I I <laughs> I think that they really struggle against like Liao or these style players, yeah. yeah. I don't know about you guys. What do you think? Uh, Josh, what do you think? Uh, I mean, Liao is always the the the, the troublemaker that 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 Napoli finds hard to 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 Control. deal with, yeah. Yeah. But then I think, but because uh the way that Milan set up is uh really try to uh impose their game and try to not let Napoli uh, have a more comfortable way of so that's why Liao is there to 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 agitate them and and, and yeah. to yeah, keep, yeah, yeah. yeah so um, given um, but I would still hope for uh, Milan semi-finals like the Inter Milan AC Milan <laughs> yeah that'll be fun that'll be fun yeah, yeah. But, yeah I mean that, that, that'll be cool. Yeah, like that, the classic. That'll be cool. That'll be yeah. cool. Uh. That, is my, that was my, actually my conspiracy theory. I said that if, <laughs> let's say, if, let's say, one of the Italian teams good thing, I think it's going to be all, all Italian final, semi-final, right, just to make sure one Italian club goes to the final. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I also think so. And I think styles make matchups. It'll be interesting. If Napoli play Inter, I think Napoli will win. But if Inter play AC Milan, I think Inter, Inter Milan will win. 
it's just like a weird. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, it, we shall like, see, lor. <laughs> like people were like like the club that suffer in league, they will perform better in knocked out. Yeah, knocked out football. Tournament. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 is, that is true. That yeah, is true. that is true. Okay, so uh, score predictions. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, two two. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jordan going two two. Ah, uh. Oh, I I don't know what I think. Well, I want to go with my heart or my head. <laughs> <laughs> my heart, I really want Napoli to win, but my head sort of goes more with Milan because of the. I just don't. I think it's like sort of a kryptonite thing. So maybe I would say maybe Milan wins. I I, I will say it's one one. So it's a one one, but Milan go through on aggregate. Aggregate two one. Uh. Yeah. Okay, I'm you? gonna go. In, I'm gonna go in my heart. I want Milan to do well in the Champions League. Uh, <coughs> I will go two one Milan. Mm. <laughs> All right, two yeah. one Milan, two one Milan. So three one, three one. I get three one. I get to yeah. Milan. La. Yeah, this three will be a fun semi finals. If like if we are, our predi- predictions are all correct, lah, it'll be a very yeah. very fun semi final. If, if so, you know, huh? you know if right? Sorry, yeah. Uh, if uh, Man City would okay, Man City most likely would go through. If they win Real Madrid, do you think they will win the? Champions League. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which I don't want. Uh. <laughs> yeah. No, past, past seasons, right, you can sort of fall back on the fact that they don't have a striker or like they but don't now have you a... Are. Yeah, yeah. Now. But yeah, this is now that he's very like... Ah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's so physically imposing that it's very hard to say that mm. they cannot... Yeah. Somehow they just... De Bruyne is also on hot form also. So yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but it'll, be, it'll be interesting. Lah. So, I mean... If everything goes according to what we think will, will happen, right, it'll be two very interesting semifinals. Lah. I, I really think uh, if it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an all Italian final if Inter goes through. Uh. Mm-hmm. 100%. Oof, yeah, we shall see. Should be a fun one. Mm. Let's see. All right. So that is it for our Champions League roundup and predictions for the second leg. Okay, so thank you everybody for listening in to today's episode of the Football Kaki brought to you by the Chit Chatter Podcast Network. Uh, for everybody listening in, thank you once again. And we hope that you continue to listen to us and all of our other shows across the network where we have the Kopi Bros every Monday with Paul, Media, Brendan. And of course, the SG Draft Podcast, our game show every Friday where we draft about different topics and have fun while we do it. Uh. So from everybody here at the Football Kaki, we just uh, want to wish you a good week ahead. And of course, a very happy Champions League week uh, and we are getting closer guys mm. one more I think about a few more weeks until we get to the final already uh. yeah. so it's coming soon it's coming soon we may crown probably a new champion we may have another back to back so we shall see so from everybody here at the Football Kaki uh, thank you very much and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Chit Chatter Podcast Network and from everybody here at the Kaki Bros the champions come on Bayern <laughs> come, come on Bayern come, come on Milan let's go let's go <laughs> nothing alright thanks everybody thank Bye. you bye